I'm Kyle Adams with the Flat Earth Institute of Science, and today we have a special guest, Orphan Red. And I've got to say, I was really nervous when she accepted my invitation to be interviewed, because I had no idea what to expect. But getting to know her, she is actually really, really cool. And I hope this interview will help you see that. As you will see, she has a very straightforward personality and will say it like it is and not just tell you what you want to hear. With her 7,710 subscribers, she is currently number four on our list of the top 10 female flatter channels on YouTube. She is also a proud member of Mensa, scoring among the top 1% of the highest scoring people to take the IQ test in the world. So without further ado, Orphan Red. Okay, well, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video, so it's nice to be getting back into the swing of things. Um, I'm just going to move things around a little bit. Okay, so I can see you. <laughs> so I am from Canada, and I have always been an independent thinker. Um, I believed in science when I was younger as the best way to acquire knowledge about the world. Um, but even in elementary school, school I was... Sorry, even in elementary school, I was reading about UFOs and aliens and the Bermuda Triangle. And I was just fascinated by all these mysteries. And it taught me that science doesn't have answers for all the mysteries of our reality, of our world. And more than that, I noticed that it wasn't just that science couldn't answer these questions. It was that science mocked and ridiculed the people who talked about these things. And the scientific establishment, I suppose, right? Um, and so instead of instead of respecting that people were having these experiences, people were seeing UFOs, people were, I don't know, people were feeling like they were being abducted, instead of looking into these things and providing proper explanations for, for these phenomena, um, the scientific establishment just made it seem as though these people were crazy, the whole thing was absurd. And what I find interesting with that and the relevance it has to Flat Earth is that science was saying, don't believe what you're seeing. Don't believe what you're experiencing. Don't believe your memories. Um, instead- let us, let us do your thinking for you, right? Well, even more than that, it was saying instead, believe in gravitons, believe in bendy space-time fabric, believe in dark matter. So believe in things that you can't experience, you can't see, you can't verify yourself, and disbelieve the things that you do experience and that you do see and that you are verifying for yourself. And so I found that very interesting. Um, I was raised Catholic, so I went to church on Sundays, I went to Catholic school, and so I could see the parallels between religion and this this scientific establishment that was saying, only believe what we tell you to believe. Don't believe what other authorities tell you. Thing. Yeah, like don't believe what the what the the paranormal psychology experts tell you to believe. Don't believe what the UFO experts tell you to believe. Only believe what we tell you to believe. Um, believe in gravity. Otherwise we'll mock and ridicule you and shame you forever. Right? Yes, yeah. And so, and so I thought that was strange to see that science was acting as a religion. Um, so that made me rebellious and it made me more interested in looking at the, the mysteries that science couldn't solve. And it made me more interested in science itself. So I was fascinated by physics and chemistry and, and I learned as much as I could about those topics that within those domains that I found most thrilling. Um, yeah, going from UFOs to flat earth is a pretty big jump there. What got you to flip that whole thing? Um, you know, I think it just made me more open-minded. I was more open-minded about the idea that, that maybe there were things that the mainstream media, mainstream popular science didn't allow for that might still be true. Maybe we had experiences that we would get dismissed for that might still be legitimate or valid. And I'm not saying that I necessarily believe that people are being abducted by aliens or that UFOs are necessarily what people say they are, but I'm just saying that the people are having these experiences and until you can 
explain what's causing these experiences, you shouldn't just be mocking people who are reporting them. And so with Flat Earth, um, I came across a video of the flight paths that don't make sense on a globe. And this yeah, was yeah. six years ago. And back in those days, YouTube worked very differently. In those days, what YouTube would do is if you were watching a video about flat earth flight paths that disprove the globe, the column of watch next recommended videos would be filled with things that were related to what you were looking into. So there would be math parallel videos and there would be Mark Sargent videos. So there would be all these flat earth videos. Now that's different. Now when you watch a flat earth video, YouTube recommends Simon Dan, Neil deGrasse Tyson debunking flat earth. It recommends all these debunking. There's a big war on it. On Sorry? All, everything. I said there's a big war on everything flat earth related going on right now. Yeah, there's a, I've, I've definitely seen that change that you're talking about where uh, it used to be a lot easier to find flat earth content, but now the only people you see are the anti flat earthers. Yeah, and so I was lucky that I got into flat earth in the early days. Um, so YouTube was still serving up related content. Um, and so I just went down the rabbit hole and then I started looking into the globe model. Actually, that's where I started from. I just uh -huh. kind of thought, okay, if they're telling me that these flight paths don't work and, and, and the evidence that they're presenting is intriguing, it's compelling. And the Mark Sargent's clues, I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, so instead of starting from a position of wanting to prove flat earth, I started from a position of wanting to disprove the globe. So I started looking at the underlying assumptions that are unproven, that we just take as a given, that are the foundation for the premises of globe model truths. So I started looking at like, how, how do we know that gravity is, has to do with two masses attracting each other? Well, we know from the Cavendish experiment. Okay, well then how was that conducted and what were the details of the Cavendish experiment? And the more I looked into these things, the more I realized there are a lot of problems with the standard model. Um, distance to Polaris that keeps changing um, by large orders of magnitude. Um, just all these discrepancies, I guess, in the GLOW model. And so that's how I came into Flat Earth. Rather than trying to prove Flat Earth, I really wanted to look at the GLOBE model and say, where are the flaws in this model? And I found yeah, enough. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's kind of what your foundation was, right? So before you want to go on to a new foundation, you want to find out, you want to try and defend the foundation you've built your entire, uh, you know, life perspective on, right? No one well, just- not, not so much defend, but I think more investigate because in science, you don't assume that the alternative is true and set out to prove it. You assume that the alternative is false and you set out to determine, is that alternative, is there enough evidence to say that the standard belief is wrong, right? So a, scientist, a scientific perspective isn't to say there's a globe model, which we accept as truth, and then there's a flat earth, so let's go try to prove the flat earth. It's more, yeah. There's a globe model and then there's this flat earth theory. Can we disprove the globe model? And if we can find enough evidence to suggest the globe model is wrong, then we have an impetus to start looking at is the flat earth model right or wrong, right? And yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, you kind of, um, when presented with a challenge, it, it you start looking at your own foundation and that's when all of a sudden, it, you see all these contradictions and cracks in the foundation you're standing on. It's like, what have I been building my life on this whole time? And that's when, when you see all those little errors, that's when you can start to look around at the other things. And it's like, okay, well, do things make more sense over there? And then it's a much smoother transition that way, right? Yes, and I was very surprised by how much I had taken on blind faith. I had taken on blind faith, the distance to the sun. I had taken on blind faith that the particle physics was correct. And even that now, that theory has kind of starting to be more and more dismissed. Now there's field theory that does a better explanation. Um, uh -huh. 
uh, that offers a better explanation. Field theory is that like a magnetic field or what kind of field theory are you talking about? Well, just that the particles aren't just these little isolated points in space uh, that have different uh -huh. properties, right? That rather yeah. there's just an underlying field and a particle is an excitation in that underlying field and that there's like uh -huh. island of stability in that field, right? Uh -huh. And so, so I could see even in science, I could see that things that have been published as truth 10 years ago were then proven to be wrong, right? The diameter of the proton. Oh, we've established the diameter of proton. This is the truth. This is the be all end all. And then 10 years later, they say, oh, we were completely wrong. And it's a completely <laughs> yeah. different size. And never Read mind the textbooks. <laughs> yeah. And that's the funny thing as well, is that then everyone using old textbooks and most public schools will use old textbooks for decades. They're yeah. still learning the old diameter and they're still growing up believing that that's the truth unquestionably. Um, yeah. But it's not, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. when did, when did, uh, when did you, when did all this happen is what I'm trying to say. Uh, six years did, ago. Okay, six years ago. And did you immediately go and set up your YouTube channel right after that? Or did it take a little bit more time? I had a YouTube channel. Um, uh -huh. So I got fibromyalgia about 10 uh -huh. years ago. Um, and it just tore my life to shreds. It just destroyed oh, yeah. my entire life. And yeah. so I started doing YouTube just to amuse myself, to connect with cousins that live far away because I was very isolated. Um, mm -hmm. And I was just, just having fun with it. It was really just a, a coping mechanism uh, and yeah. a way to amuse myself. And then, so when I came across the flat earth content, uh, I really felt like I need to talk about this. I need to share this. I need to balance these ideas off of people, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to just be this channel that presents I don't want to say boring data, but I didn't want to do what other people were already doing. You know, yeah. Mark Sargent was already doing, here's fact, here's a fact, here's a fact. And Matthew Powerland was already doing the kind of more philosophical, what does it mean? What do you see and how do you believe it? You know, uh -huh. um, and there was some, I, don't, I think his channel was Cesar or something. Uh -huh. um, and he was just, not even showing his face, but just showing the data. That was, I think, the channel that did the flight data. And so yeah. I kind of wanted to find my own way because I don't like doing something that someone else is already doing. What's the point? Yeah, you don't want to steal their thunder or anything like that. And, and then yeah. it's boring, right? And so yeah. I wanted to do something more playful. Um, um, yeah, but also, and I think here's the point that I think a lot of people miss what Flat Earth made me realize was that we take on faith what people who seem to be respectable or who seem to be authoritative, we take on faith whatever they tell us, right? Yeah, yeah. So, There's the whole credentials fallacy, right? If, if they're an expert, that means they're probably true. They're, yeah. They're probably right. And I had done that. I had taken on faith that, the, that my teacher had taught me the correct distance to the sun. And because she was a teacher and because she was authoritative and she, My you know, teacher said so, therefore it's right. Yeah. And so with my channel, I wanted to, to kind of subvert that and say, uh -huh. you need to learn to evaluate information on its own merits, not based on attributes of the person that are communicating that information to you. So it shouldn't matter if I'm in a princess dress on a bed telling you these informations or if I'm wearing glasses and very serious and maybe male wearing a NASA coat or t-shirt like that. It shouldn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Right? What should matter is how are you interpreting the information that we're presenting and how do you know if it's true or not? Are you just trusting that it's true because it's Neil deGrasse Tyson or are you just trusting that it's not true because it's orphan red or are you actually taking the time to evaluate the information to see if it's logical, to see if it's coherent? And so that was what I was trying to kind of do with my channel. I was aiming at an audience that would be clever enough to understand that distinction and to, to get to that break point. down the genetic fallacy, right? Kind of not judging a source by who's saying it, but by the material that they actually present. It doesn't matter who says it, it matters what's being said. 
And I think it's most relevant now because we see when Trump was talking about rolling out a vaccine, the left was saying, I will never take a vaccine, you know, because it's, it was Trump saying you should get vaccinated. Uh -huh. for COVID. And then as soon as Biden got in office and he was saying, you should take a vaccine, the left started saying, if you don't, yeah, let's do it. I'm going to beat you on the street. Yeah. And, so, and that's the same thing. It's saying, are you evaluating the information? Were you evaluating the validity of vaccination? Or were you just evaluating who was telling you to get vaccinated and letting irrelevant information about who the person was who was telling you to do this guide your decision about whether that's a good idea whether that's true right and so yeah 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 now that's why i'm uh one of the series i'm doing is called modern earth science destroyed where we're actually just reading through a textbook and looking for exactly what you're talking about instances where the textbook is telling us to to just trust them based on the merit of who is saying it but rather than what facts are supporting that claim. And so I'm just like, what is wrong with the educational system today with all these trust-based uh, examples of just trust us, we're the experts, therefore we're right, and rather than presenting actual information for, for their founding arguments or claims. Yes. Just a side note, um, you might want to edit out the V word and replace it with a sound because... Oh, yeah. yeah, vaccines are a very tough, sensitive topic right now. I don't think we've said anything too crazy right now. So we said the word said, yeah. vaccinated, so you might want to, I don't know, maybe lower the, I don't know, maybe put in a, a meow or some <laughs> That's smart. Yeah, I, don't, I wonder what will happen this time. Will I get like a double like flyer at the very bottom of the screen with the... This is flat earth content and vaccine content. Watch out. <laughs> YouTube will limit your views. Definitely. We'll yeah. yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, how has your family been with this whole transition at the moment you started making these videos? Have they been very supportive of it or have they kind of been with kind of, oh, whoa, you're kind of out there? Um, it's been a bit mixed. So most of them don't really bring it up because they know I'm intelligent, uh -huh. but they know that the mainstream ideology has persuaded them that flat earth equals stupid. Yeah. So I think they're a little bit confused about how to reconcile this <laughs> idea that Sasha, we know she's bright and yet here she is talking about flat earth. So I, I think they don't really know what to, some of them don't really know what to make of it. So I think they just, yeah don't take a position on it, don't like to think about it maybe. Um, I've seen some who have anger under the surface because they're so frightened of what flat earth implies and because they know that I'm bright so that I wouldn't just be believing this on a whim. And so yeah. I think that that threatens their sense of security, their sense of understanding what the world is about. And so for them, there's this anger just on the, the, the surface. So I've seen, you know, when when people are a bit drunk, um, I have seen kind of these those little flashes of anger about that topic yeah. come out. Well, I think a lot of people just get mad because they grew up with these uh, teachers who they kind of view as like parental type figures who are uh, very trusting. And you tell me, if you're telling me my mom is wrong, then there's trouble now. You know what I mean? They, they get really defensive like that. Uh, it's kind because of like then, they don't know, then they don't necessarily know if all their other beliefs are wrong. Yeah. yeah. So then they don't have solid ground anymore. I think it's stressful for them. Um, as for friendships, it's been interesting because I've lost the respect of some friends that are intelligent and well-educated and their respect meant something to me. So that's been really hard. But at the same time, I've lost respect for those, for some of those people as well, because I thought some of those people were more intelligent, that they were better thinkers, that, that they were more anchored in truth and in evidence. And then it turns out that they're not, they're anchored in blind faith, that they're, they're threatened by something that suggests that maybe the knowledge they've acquired isn't true. And I think that that scares them because then they think, well, how am I, 
the smartest guy in the room now if everything I've memorized isn't true anymore. That right? Yeah. So then how do I prove that I'm the smartest in the room? So I've been really disappointed um, to see some of the people that I respected. <sighs> yeah, it's just disappointing to see that they're not they're not as just the clear reactions. They're not as strong as you were hoping they would be. You you thought they'd be much more accepting, and all of a sudden, well, not, not accepting, but you know. <sighs> Intelligence is one thing, but the ability to think flexibly and the ability to think and and to not let cognitive dissonance sway you too much. I think we yeah. all experience some cognitive dissonance, but how we react to that, right? So there are things that I believe to be uh -huh. true. And then there are things that I like to think are true, but I maybe they're true, maybe they aren't. And I'm kind of okay with that. I'm okay with saying, yeah. I believe that this is true, Maybe it's not, and if if someone gives me information that tells me that's not true, then I'm okay with with revising that belief and revising my understanding of how things work to mm -hmm. accept that new information, right? And so yeah. it's just exciting to see intelligent, educated people who who don't know the difference between what you believe to be true and what you know to be true, and they think whatever they think is true they know it to be true and uh -huh. i just thought i thought they were more insightful i guess than that so it's yeah. double -edged sword so some have lost respect for me i have lost respect for some um in terms of family yeah it's it hasn't necessarily helped things at all um yeah, yeah. i think flat earth for me is like one of my absolute favorite things to talk about and you know it's an obsession of mine it seriously has been ever since i really you know, discovered it. And I, I it's, it, it's uh, kind of depressing sometimes when you really want to tell people about it and they're just not interested. They just kind of, that's a topic that they just don't want to talk about. And it's like, why are you shutting it out? It's not like it's a boring subject or anything like that. And yeah, but there's like, nope, I, I don't want to, it's too controversial or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I find, <clears throat> excuse me, I do find for dating, it makes it harder for meeting new people. I don't tell new people about it. Um, yeah. I don't tell people that, that I go on first dates with about it. Um, yeah, because I think people who have only heard of it from the popular media. The only thing they know about flat earth is there are these really stupid people online that think the earth is flat and how dumb are they? If that's the only exposure you've had to flat earth, then I can see how if your friend starts coming up to you and saying, hey, uh, let's talk about flat earth. I can see how they're like, well, I don't have time for that. That's just nonsense, yeah. uh -huh. right? And so I think that that's an obstacle, an extra obstacle we have to overcome is yeah. to somehow put put it out there in the mainstream thought that flat earth isn't synonymous with idiocy um, and that there is something to it. It doesn't help that there's some members of the community that work, I think, against us, but some people thought that about my channel. So who am I, right, to, yeah. <laughs> to judge others? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh... I think some people can be a little confused by just kind of the way you present yourself and just, okay, you, you, about how serious about this you really are. You know what I mean? And so people, oh, you're just joking around. And I think some people think that way about me as well. Just, oh, you're just joking around. You're not, you're not being serious, but no, it's totally, it's legit. Right. I do wonder now that more people are seeing the deceptions, I think in the mainstream news, uh -huh. Especially about the current health concerns. I guess that's a, a nice term we could use and won't get you dinged on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there are a lot more people who are refusing the treatment um, and they're seeing the media lie to them and, and try to deceive them about numbers, about efficacy. The story keeps changing about what works and what doesn't work. Do masks work? Do they not? Do you have to wear three? Should you not wear them at all? Are they dangerous? And so I do wonder if we're going to see more people looking into Flat Earth as a consequence of people losing trust in, in these authorities that they mm -hmm. up to now have just 
place their blind trust in. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Have you ever met any other flat earthers yourself or like in person or just online? No, I have. Uh, about five years ago, I went down to Seattle for a Flat Earth Mixer, and I met up with Mark Sargent. Cairo Glyphs was there. Uh -huh. um, there was a room full of Flat Earthers. Uh, that was really interesting. Uh, um, and then I've met Antonio in person. I went to the UK uh -huh. um, to see him. And I wanted to go see Jed Skeptic Media. He's an anti-Flat Earth Flat Earther. Like, he's in the community. Uh -huh. Flat Earth, right? Um, yeah. But I didn't trust myself not to flirt with him too much. So, <laughs> I, so <laughs> I thought, oh, I'll never be able to behave. So I just won't go at all. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I've always been itching to go to like Oktoberfest or sorry, um, Flattoberfest. I've always been itching to go to one of those or just meet other people. But uh, they've got a thing now with the the Flat Earth Clock app, um, if, you've heard, if you've heard of that or not, but the Flat Earth Clock, Clock app has a new update that tells you where all of the other Flat Earthers are in your area. So anyone else who has that Clock app can show their kind of relative location. And for me, I just looked it up recently and I found six other Flat Earthers like within my neighborhood. I was like, wow, this is amazing. So it's really exciting stuff. Uh, so it's... I think it's going to be a huge change when it comes to just the whole community building and uh, getting the word out. You know what I mean? Well, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with you on that one. Tell me what you think. Uh -huh. okay. um, for example, well, uh, for two reasons. So one, I did meet a flat earther here. So I moved to central Canada last year um, and we went out for a drink and we just, yeah, we had no values in common. We had different lifestyles, um, different ideas about things. Um, and just there wasn't even enough to really build a friendship on. Yeah. And just because you share one belief with someone, that doesn't mean that, that there's enough there to be compatible. Um, yeah. It doesn't tell you what their values are. People think it does. People think, oh, then you have Christian values or you have open-minded values or no, that's not what I found. Yeah, what we're, I found. We're a very, very diverse community, right? Yes. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. And one thing I've noticed though, maybe I don't want to say it's a commonality within the flat earth community, but I was surprised to what extent <laughs> there is this trait in, in flat earth community. And uh -huh. that's a lack of discernment. Uh -huh. I've been surprised at the lack of discernment um, people in the flat earth community have had. What do you and mean that, by that? Because I thought, I thought that, the people in our community, and it's not a community, it's just a collection of people who happen to share one belief, right? Yeah. In the same way that not all globlings can be friends because they're too different. I think that's in the, that's the same for the flat earth people. I, I won't Makes call sense. it a community. Um, oh. But so I've noticed that the flat earth, let's say the online community of flat earthers, um, there was a Satanist who was effectively trolling flat earthers at first and then realized he could make money off of it. So then he stopped, he was doing less trolling and trying to, to better meet the needs of his fans so that he could make money with his channel. Um, and so many flat earthers just ate it up. And, you know, and I was in the inner circle of the beginning group when Flat Earth was still small enough that there was a little inner circle. Uh -huh. um, and seeing behind the veil, seeing the inauthenticity, um, seeing the deception, seeing the manipulations, seeing people just telling their fans whatever the fans wanted to hear. And then seeing the fans just buy into whatever the celeb guru told them. Um, yeah, there's there can be kind of that popularity haze where uh, I guess you could say it kind of religion sees a lot of this sometimes where uh, someone 
gets really popular and then all of a sudden the church is just telling you what you want to hear rather than what you know things what the doctrine actually says well we had people that weren't even flat earthers who were some of the biggest flat earth channels because uh -huh. people couldn't see through right they just and that concerned me and and i got kicked out of the inner it was a self-declared inner circle but whatever uh -huh. but i got kicked out because i wouldn't say what i was being told to say and i was saying what i was being told not to say and uh -huh. i was challenging some of the other they they called themselves the top brass um self-appointed top brass and i would challenge them publicly right and and yeah. question them and say i don't think that what you said is correct um and i was punished for that i paid a really high price for that because i totally hear you on that you're not supposed to question the high priests of flat earth and oh. that was so shocking to me because i thought i thought this is a community of independent thinkers but it wasn't at all i was so yeah shocked when when you lose that, that it kind of kills it it's just like what happened what's going on and uh i i've gone through a similar experience myself i was a part of before i became the flat earth institute of science i was part of a facebook group called the flat earth academy and with the flat earth academy uh, it had a whole bunch of different people there. And uh, I'm like, oh, well, there's some great information here. I want to organize it. And I want to help take this whole Flat Earth Academy to the next level. And so I started to do that. And as I started to do that, I started to point out a lot of the, the things, how they really made sense to me. Okay, well, it takes a little more than perspective to make the sun just appear to set. I think there's a lot of refraction that goes under there. And because I said, that the sun sets because of refraction. All of a sudden, oh, whoa, you're going against the, the doctrine here. And I got kicked out of it. They they banned me. And they're like, you're not a real flat earther. You're just a poser or something like that. I was like, what? And so that really, that really bothered me. And it broke my heart because, you know, I, I was so, you know, I'm such a flat earther. I'm so part of the community. And yet they're rejecting me because I dared challenge, you know, the common belief at the time. Yes. And so that that's not right. No, and it's it's sad to see because I think we we mistakenly believe because we're naive, I think, but we mistakenly believe that that if the people who would be interested in flat earth theory, the people who would be interested in the research about it would be people who are more interested in truth, who want to challenge ideas and who want to question things, but it's all about looking for the observations, the experiments and observations that that you build your foundation on. You know what I mean? Uh, the yeah. that's the core. And so, if you can't do that, then we're just doing what NASA is doing. We don't want to make the same mistakes that they're making. Yeah, and I was surprised by the the hostility. It wasn't just that they were saying, "Look, don't challenge us, don't question us." There was hostility. Um, yeah. There were mean yeah. messages sent. It was brutal. Uh, uh -huh. I cried. Like, it was really harsh. Um, yeah. And that surprised me as well. Yeah, that surprised me as well. Yeah, I, I hear you. It, it's a tough world out there. And that's where I really try to do my best to, uh, to exemplify what I strive for. And I really hope to... You know, invite common minds to to come and you know be the example here, and you know raise up their light, as as yeah. the saying goes. Yes, yeah, I like that. That's my little motto: is I try to be a light, even if you know life gives you unfair challenges, uh -huh. and you can let that make you bitter or angry or depressed. And and it's okay to be angry for a while or be depressed uh -huh. for a while. It's even okay in some circumstances to be bitter for a while. But uh -huh. then you have to pick yourself back up and you have to be a light in the world. You have to, you can't go around hating people and hating the world for the unfair challenges that, that have happened to you in your life, right? Because then you become an ugly person that's just contributing to the ugliness in the world, right? Yeah. So I think you kind of have to go through it, get past it, and then go back to being a light and trying to add wonder to the world, trying to add beauty, trying to add kindness. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, there's a saying I really like. It says, uh, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. 
So we all need those storms to, to really define us and help us become stronger. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this probably hasn't something that you've ever brought up like with your work situation or your job or anything. Has that affected that at all? Uh, no. Um, no, but there are situations that I've been in where where it affected my credibility and uh -huh. and yeah and that was a little bit of a challenge there yeah so mm -hmm. what major advice do you have for other people going through similar challenges i think i think you should stand up and be counted as part of the people who are brave enough to challenge the status quo in order to speak the truth. Um, and I think, I think people need to speak out and I think you're going to pay a high price for it. But I think that that price is worth paying. Um, I think like we've seen with this current health situation, every time you let the lies go, it just gives more room for more lies. It gives a foundation for more lies to be built on that. And so I think we have to start fighting back against just pretending that we believe the lies around us, whether that has to do with your thoughts about mask mandates or whether that has to do with the shape of the earth. I think we have to stop hiding and you will pay a price for it. You will damage your credibility. Um, you probably will be made fun of by people. Um, it might change and damage some of your relationships. But I think that that's a small price to pay to, to say, look, I'm living an honest life and I'm, I'm telling the truth and I'm, I am pursuing the truth. It's not even about saying I've reached the truth and, and now I know everything and that's all there is because the flat earth, I think there's too many people who have that attitude of, you know, I understand it and there's a dome and it's made of sapphire and the angels come in through little portals and, you know, and, and I just uh -huh. think just because you know that the earth is not a globe and that the earth is flat, that doesn't mean you have all the answers yet. You still yeah. have to do, right? I get that all the time. People are like, oh, well, if you think it's flat, then that must mean you know everything, you know all the answers. I'm like, no, there's so many things I don't understand. And I have to openly acknowledge the fact that I don't understand them. And that way I can, you know, be actively looking for ways to understand them. So yeah. I've got to find answers. I can't find answers if I know everything, right? And it has to be okay to say, I don't know. Like people say, well, yeah. what's under the flat earth? I don't know what's under the flat earth, but that doesn't mean that the earth is a globe just because yeah. I don't yet know, right? Yeah. And so- That's the incredulity fallacy. If, it, if there's something you don't know, that means it's false. That's totally a fallacy. It's, yeah, it doesn't work that way. And I think, I think that the more we speak out the more we might find that that our numbers are greater than we think they are. Like you said, you were surprised to find that there are six flat earthers in your in your neighborhood, but that's yeah. only the ones who bought the app and are on it. I'm a flat earther. I'm not yeah. on the app. I haven't bought it. I'm not yeah. on right. And so yeah. I think that there are a lot more of us. And oh, for sure. Right. And yeah. the more we speak out, the more it gives other people the the courage to do the same. Yeah. And I think it's, it's really fun on the map because. Uh, it's really fun on the app because it shows a whole map of the United States and you can see dots of flat earthers all over the United States. And I can click on any one of those dots and I can instantly message them. And so I can verify that they are a legitimate flat earther. It's, it's really, really cool. Uh, but as you're saying here about the, the trials and the, the sacrifices that we've really made in here, uh, I don't think it would have anywhere near as much validity to what we're saying if we didn't have to sacrifice anything. I think those sacrifices, people see that we go through struggles on these things, right? And so when they can see our struggles, that really gives it credibility that it's so worth it to us that we are willing to make sacrifices on behalf of it. Does that make sense? I, I don't know. I don't know if that's kind of, people, but I do know. Kind of the, the whole death is a martyr thing, you know, it, when the, when someone dies for their beliefs, that kind of gives it just conviction. It gives it conviction on just how much they believed in it. 
Yeah, I know. Because there are zealots of everything. There, look at ISIS. There's zealots of Islam That's true. They're willing to kill you for their belief, to prove to their God how zealous they are about their belief. So I don't think that that necessarily helps us. Um, wow. But I do think, like I said about the health situation, I think that if we can build communities of flat earthers, that these are communities of people who are willing to go against the narrative that, this, that the status quo is trying to, to impose. And so I think that that applies as well to other domains. And so I think uh, we're going to see that maybe be useful in the years to come. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think that's one of the, the things I really like about the whole app too, is the fact that I can see where the hotspots are. So if I ever wanted to go and form my own group, do my own little flat earth convention or something, I can see where like some major hotspots are where a lot of people are. And that way I can get people together and go uh, actually have a good turn up. You know what I mean? The only thing I, I, I hesitate to bring this up, but I will. You're fine. You're fine. You're, yeah, that's what we're all about, right? It's about just kind of being yourself, not being afraid to, to say something that someone might be, Oh, watch out. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, I think that there's a danger to that app. Uh -huh. to identifying yourself on that app because I think I don't know that I want any group that can get access to the data on that app. And even if they don't sell the data, that doesn't mean that that, that data isn't available to people who are motivated to access it. So yeah, it's kind I of part of the war thing, right? It's kind of, you don't know, now you've given people an instant target for you know, if they wanted to take down the flat not earth, they could war, find easy access. Not war, that's too extreme. But I think if oh. I were, you know, I could, not if I were, but I could see a government saying, there's a group of people who are dissenting from these policies we're trying to impose. And there's a really big over, overlap between this community of people who are descending, dissenting against this and this other community that are dissenting against these policies. And there's enough overlap that if we target the flat earthers, then we will get maybe the anti-injection people in that same group, right? Uh -huh. And so if you are looking to quarantine those people, maybe because you realize, okay, they're too much of a threat. They haven't gotten the third booster shot, so they're a threat now, so we want to quarantine them. How do we find them? Well, here's an app that tells you exactly where they are, yeah. right? And uh -huh. so I, I don't, I'm not comfortable with that. And yeah. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be. Everyone has to make their own choices. Um, yeah. I'm saying that for me, I'm a little concerned with the speed at which people are just throwing their information out there for this app, and without questioning it and without wondering, you know. Yeah, I, I hear you on that. There's, and I think that's my big concern about letting, there's different options on there. So you can know, let it know your exact location or you can let it know your general location. So I'm I know, in you know the city. From, your, from your phone GPS. What's that? As soon as, you download, as soon as you download the app, it has your GPS information. Yeah, has that's your true. And so it's hackable. You're, 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 that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, any government agency that wants to know who has that app, they can find out who has the app on their phone yeah. and where they're located, right? Yeah. And I mean, that applies to anything else. But the thing is, I think that the flat earthers, because we've seen, we've seen how we've been targeted by YouTube. We've seen the shadow banning that's occurred. So clearly, the... There's a movement against us. <laughs> the big tech, even Google has has changed the results for flat earth so it's really clear that we're already we've already been identified as threatening to the status quo and so uh -huh. it wouldn't surprise me then if 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 we're marked as a community that might that might warrant extra observation yeah yeah and I'm not saying that as a paranoid conspiracy theorist. Like, I'm really not. I'm just saying, look, if you look at the evidence, the fact that they're shadow banning us, the fact that Google is changing its search results, it means that they're paying attention to us. It means that they don't want other people paying attention to us. It means that there's something about our message or our community that, that they want to minimize, that they want to stamp out. Um, and we've seen the infiltration 
uh, of the Flat Earth community by different groups uh, that were working to weaken it, uh, to dismantle it. So, so I think I think it's not being paranoid. I think it's just let's not be naive. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing that just for me it just gets me the most excited is just watching the statistics, watching the numbers grow. You know, when I found just the six other people within my neighborhood, I was really excited because you know, and especially seeing the whole map of the United States with uh, just it being covered with dots of different people and kind of where they're at. Just what having some kind of validity. It, it just, I'm not alone. That was just a really exciting moment for me. And just being able to contact other people who kind of see things differently. That way I can kind of uh, look for people who I can share ideas with and kind of get their views on things. And so for me, I want to go out and take every one of them out for lunch and go interview everyone I can and say, hey, tell me about you and what's your story. And yeah, just like what we're doing right now. I, I think that'd be just really, really fun. You know, yeah. I, I'm maybe more jaded. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, it's fine. But like, it was the same with Mensa. I went uh -huh. to uh, a Mensa event last summer when I moved to the city. Uh huh. And, you know, I go through this world very alone. Uh -huh. um, I do what I can to, to try to blend in with the humans. <laughs> but it, <laughs> It's a challenge that I that I I'm not always up to, um, and so I was really hoping, like, okay, finally I'll have a group of people that I can talk to, that I can just connect with, that can, that are that it, just have that capacity that I you know I can just the exchange of ideas can happen a little bit more fluidly, um, um. and I was so bitterly disappointed. So I get to the restaurant where we're meeting. And they're uh -huh. already there and they're sitting at the tables and like they've been there for a while because they have their waters, their coats are off, but they're all wearing their masks. At the oh, table. yeah. And I was thinking, OK, that's a bit odd for a men's group because uh -huh. we know, well, we should know that the data on masks are that they don't reduce viral transmission. And so. So I thought that was a bit odd. So then I thought, well, maybe they're just being polite. Maybe everyone's kind of afraid of what other people are wanting. So they're just trying to make each other comfortable. Uh -huh. um, so I go, I sit down, we order food. When the food comes, then they start, I took my mask, like I took my mask off right away as soon as I got to the uh -huh. table because it was mask mandates, right? Um, yeah. But so the food comes and so then they have to take their masks off to eat. So we were talking. And I, I kind of brought that up that, you know, uh -huh. it's, it's funny that there are mass mandates in the city because, you know, the data show they don't work. And the outrage, oh my goodness. It blew up on you, wow. <laughs> I felt like they were, like, not all, um, but that they were gonna set me on fire and throw me out the window. There was one woman. I'm the witch. <laughs> <laughs> and the more I spoke with them, the more I realized that they weren't, I mean, they're, they were just, they were the kind of people you'd meet on a university campus, right? Yeah. Like they were smart, uh -huh. but they weren't exceptionally, I don't, you know, exceptionally yeah. clever. There was one woman, she was in her mid eighties. She was old. She was bright, so bright, so intelligent and interesting and funny and kind. So I really liked her, this uh -huh. old, old woman. I, I really liked her and she was really interesting to talk to. Um, but the others were so rigid in their thinking and, and a few things came up because I brought up the mass things and, you know, you know, just their full support for the lockdowns, even though all the data shows that the lockdowns are unsuccessful. Um, uh -huh. And I realized again, I was like this rigid thinking. So, so maybe some of them are, you know, they're brighter, but they're so rigid in their thinking. Uh -huh. um, and it was it was only the ones like the, the older women who who are bright enough that they can. I don't know. It's two things, right? I think either you have to be intelligent enough to understand how information works, or you have to be a flexible thinker. Yeah. Right. It's and so hard to do that when you've kind of. It's hard to be a flexible thinker when you've got all this pride invested that I'm so much smarter than everyone else in the room, therefore there's no way I can possibly be wrong. Yeah. And I think our, 
our school system destroys a lot of people who are slightly more intelligent because it rewards them for memorizing and for saying yeah. back what they learned. Um, and it re yeah, so it rewards you for saying what the book says is true rather than trying to figure out for yourself what might be true. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally hear you on that. So, but I, I don't understand the rigid thinking because the rigid thinking, I see that across the board. I see that on people who don't even have the capacity to understand basic logic, but I also see it at, at the higher levels. I, you know, I, it just seems across the board there's this phenomena of rigid thinking. And I find that really frustrating because it's that rigid thinking that, that allows people to cling to wrong beliefs. It's, it's, that's what makes people demand more lockdowns, demand mask mandates, demand segregation between the injected and the non-injected, right? It's that rigid thinking. Um, the Globlings, the Simon Dans, it's just that rigid thinking. And, and I don't know how, I don't know how you get around that because I, I don't think I quite understand what's at work there. So I don't know how to overcome it. When I'm talking to someone who's a rigid thinker, like I, I played this game with an engineer um, because he was challenging a flat earth. He thought it was like, he was like, oh, you must be crazy. And so I said, let's play this game. So what are alternative explanations that we can find to explain LIDAR or, you know what I mean? All these different things. Uh -huh. He couldn't play the game uh -huh. because he kept saying, well, it works like this. And I was saying, yes, I know it works like that, but what's a cool alternative explanation that we could come up with that would match the data just as accurately, but uh -huh. would have a different conclusion, right? And yeah. he, he couldn't. He just couldn't see outside out. the box. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, there's, the yeah. This is a, I think a, I've been talking about that lately with uh, Einstein and Newton uh, with gravity and how th they both saw the same effect, but they described the thing differently. And so uh, there's different causes causing the same effect. And so that's kind of what you're telling me with LIDAR here is, well, there's the mainstream view of what's going on but that doesn't mean that's the only possibility of what's going on. There, there could be other causes that create the same effect. And that's what you're asking. And so what other causes could do the same thing? Yes. And, and it just, and, and I've come across that um, for a while, I think two years ago, I would tweet at physicists, like basically I would challenge them on the, on the space time fabric and just say, you know, time, it's just conceptual. Right. And it's just a, it's just how humans track changes in their environment. So then how can it be said to bend? And then how can it be said to bend in accordance with space bending and even space, anything that's unobserved doesn't take on any properties and has a distribution that kind of covers the entire universe or the entire reality, according to physics. And so then you can't even talk about space existing between any two things that are unobserved. Right. And so, yeah. I would challenge them on this and say, well, how can you have a conceptual device bending on a physical level? In order to just understand that question, you have to be able to think abstractly. And in order to come up with answers to it, you have to not be a rigid thinker. And none of them, none of them were able to really deal with the question. And I realized that I think we've created our education systems so that the people who end up getting physics degrees are are maybe not the best people to have. They're really good at memorizing things. That's what they've been rewarded for their whole experience, but they're not, yeah, if we're looking for those individual thinkers who yeah. are not just doing things because that's what they're told, but they're actually thinking things out for themselves. Like they're good problem solvers. The problem solvers yeah. tend to go into engineering, but like even like they're good problem solvers, but within narrow constraints, I think. I don't know, but there's something there's something there that's lacking. Um, and it's, it's I, I find that very frustrating because I sometimes just wonder, you know, when you look at what people thought 2020 would look like, flying cars, hovercrafts, all these wonders. And when you look at the world we live in, we live in the same world that our grandparents lived in. We live in square rooms, even though we know the data shows your stress hormone levels are higher when you're seeing a 90 degree angle. So uh -huh. you're actually a lot healthier and happier 
if you're in a room that's rounded. And yet we keep building our houses with square rooms. We live in a square rooms. And, and we live in countries in the Western world where we have the money to build rounded rooms. It would be a little bit more expensive, but not that much more expensive. But we don't. We just keep living the lives of our grandparents. And, uh -huh. and I think that I think that points to something that that somehow somewhere along the way we're we're not allowing the most creative people and the most innovative people either to maintain their creativity and innovation or to find their path to a role in society where they have influence over those things. Do you know what we I mean? Keep making the same mistakes. We're not, uh, we're not adapting to the new information that we've got very well. We're just doing the things the way they've always been done. Yeah. That's rigid thinking, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. When it comes to just this whole, uh, these rigid thinkers that you're talking about, that's where I really strive to look for common ground and then build on that and say, oh, you know, and just really celebrate that. Okay, there are so many things that we disagree with, but what are the things that we actually agree upon? And then I take that little thing and then, okay, well, what's some more that I can find something that else that I agree upon? And I just take that little building block and then I can build up on that. And then I call this bridge building. I, I go from uh from something that we disagree upon and then just take those little bits of pieces that we do agree upon to try and establish that connection and by focusing on that i think that's where i get like the biggest results yes that sounds like a good way of doing it that's something i should maybe learn <laughs> building better bridges between common um common beliefs to start out with and to work from there. <laughs> uh, I think, I think by celebrating uh, our common ground, that's when we kind of establish that friendship. I'm not here to tear you down. I'm here to celebrate the things that we agree with. And yes. yeah, it's a, it's a whole different perspective instead of, you know, at each other's throats and, Oh, you know, I'm right. You're wrong. It's, it's okay. Let's work together on this. And but that applies uh, to the Flat Earth community itself, you know, because absolutely. I remember talking to one YouTuber who <clears throat> who was convinced that the sun goes down <laughs> into <clears throat> excuse me. He was convinced that the sun goes down into portals in the ocean. Uh-huh. Um, and I, you know, and I uh, I, I couldn't even like, I, I was just like, I can't, I can't, I can't even. take you seriously, <laughs> yeah. but he had a, a big following. He was doing really well. And even um, the Sapphire dome. And I kept asking, well, what evidence is there that it's Sapphire? Uh -huh. And and there was such rigidity. It was like, well, no, it is because that would be cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm sorry. I can't, it's not valid enough. That's not enough for me to, to share that belief there. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I, I need something a little stronger than that. Yeah. And so I think it, it, the flat earth community, you know, it's easy to, to think that we're somehow different. Um, in some ways we are, but in some ways we're not. And so I think we have to be careful about that and recognize that some of what we're fighting in the, broader population we also have to kind of fight against in our own habits and in, in our own ways of of processing information absolutely absolutely yeah. so what do you think were some of the biggest things that really helped your flatter channel your your channel to grow you've got seven thousand seven hundred subscribers here so uh what were some of the biggest things that contributed to that that you might be able to or what advice do you have for other channels to help grow themselves as well it helped me that I started um, when Flat Earth was small enough that it was easier to to get attention. Uh -huh. um, but I think the tip that I would give people now, you have to have an interesting persona. If you have a lot of charisma in real life, if you're the kind of guy that all the other guys want to hang out with, that works. Right. Uh -huh. But if you don't have that, you have to have an interesting persona. You can't just be the nice guy you are in real life. You can't just be the angry guy you are in real life. Like you have to have a persona. Um, uh -huh. I think in the beginning, 
it, there were so few of us th doing flat earth content. Uh -huh. And so we all watched each other's videos because there is only six, you know, maybe six channels. And so everybody watched those six channels. So it didn't matter if you had charisma or not, you still uh -huh. had an audience, right? Yeah, that was and, kind of Eric Dubay's. He's very, very monotone in everything he says. And it was like, how did he do that? And yet that whole, the, the ability that he was able to get so popular, you know, with so little charisma, that it's like, I could do that. And that's what really got me going. Uh, yeah, one of my wow. major inspirations. But but at the same time, his his lack of of uh, diversity in, in his language, uh, it, that at the same time is his own persona as well. He's so unique that way that he's very memorable. No, but I right. think he wouldn't, if he started today, his channel uh, wouldn't go anywhere. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I think what happened is in the beginning, you didn't have to have charisma. You just had to be talking about flat earth and uh -huh. people were starving for flat earth content. And so you didn't have to be good at YouTubing. <laughs> you just yeah. had to talk flat earth and you immediately had an audience. And then what happened was then those people, those channels were familiar. And so we were loyal to those channels. We were loyal to Eric Dubay's channel because he gave great info. He, I, I think he gives great information. I think he's, uh -huh. he's very intelligent. Um, but I agree with you that his style of presentation maybe doesn't necessarily match everyone's likes um, or everyone's preference. But but even Jaron, right? Like I like uh -huh. Jaron. I, I think he, you know, and he's doing very well. But the uh -huh. point is, that, like, if he started now the way he started his channel with Flat Earth content. I don't think he'd ever, because he was just kind of this guy kind of taught, you know, <laughs> like, uh -huh. and that's the thing is that, but because there was nobody else talking about Flat Earth, we were watching every Jaronism video and we were watching uh -huh. every Eric Dubay video and Mark Sargent with these interviews, we would watch every single one because it was the only Flat Earth content. And so then, and then we just built, built a loyalty and then you start thinking of them as your like online friends and you log on to YouTube. Oh, what is Jaren saying today? Right. And so you just uh -huh. watch because now it feels like a friend. But if you're starting a YouTube channel now, you can't do the same things that we did. You have to do things differently because there's so much flat earth content now that you can't just make a video Flat Earth fact, flat Earth fact, flat Earth fact in a monotonous voice. Nobody will care. Nobody will watch. Yeah. Especially if you're saying the exact same thing that 200 other channels have already said or are also saying on their channel this week, right? Yeah. So I, I've seen people do that. They'll just take random clips from other people and then just kind of throw it on there. And they don't really produce a whole lot of like of their own content. And so I, th I think I've seen those people particularly struggle as well. Like they still get subscribers, but they're just not rocketing like some of the other YouTubers. And also. also you'll see channels where they'll do something like maybe they'll have clips of, of like, oh, some clips of Eric DeBay or some clips of Mark Sargent and that one video will do really well. But then mm -hmm. the rest of their content is boring. So then their channel will kind of have a huge up and then a down, right? And so uh -huh. I think you can't look at current popular YouTube channels and Flat Earth and look at their early videos to figure out how you should do it now. It won't work. And you can't even look at them and do what they're doing now. It won't work. Um, things that will work is consistency making, but even that's not true. <laughs> I, have, I haven't made a video in four months uh -huh. and my channel, like I still get new subscribers. <laughs> yeah. And so I have a persona. And here's another thing that I wanted to bring up. Uh-huh. Trolls. Um, most of the bigger channels have a lot of haters. Um, a lot of Simon Dan fans oh, who yeah. subscribe just so that they can get a notification that you have a new video out just so that they can be the first one to leave a trolley comment or so that they can do a response video bashing your newest video. And, and they're, they're a huge portion of your view count. Like uh -huh. my, one of my most popular videos has 84,000 views. More than half I think are from trolls, from haters, from Simon Dan fans, from Professor yeah. Stick fans, right? I get, I, all of a sudden uh, my, analytics will say you got 2000 new views I'm like where'd those come from i didn't 
do anything and all of a sudden, oh, Simon and Dan. <laughs> so, yeah. And and I don't mind that because those haters, well, they're giving they're I'm making nice money from the ad revenue from their uh -huh. hate watch. So don't and, be afraid of the trolls. <laughs> and yeah, and so but here's the thing, trolls will they'll watch whatever video links to to the video that brought you to their attention, but uh -huh. they won't sub to you unless they hate you enough to give <laughs> you their attention regularly, right? So yeah. like people might hate you because you're a flat earther and they'll watch your video and they'll and they'll leave a trolley comment. But people will subscribe to my channel, watch every single one of my videos. <laughs> Because they hate me and they want to hate me on all of my videos and they, they engage like crazy, right? My <laughs> up because they want to leave a comment, right? Telling me how stupid I am on every single video. So that increases my ad revenue, it boosts my channel rankings. Like that's all good for my channel. Um, yeah. So trolls are an important thing. And that goes Thank with the trolls. <laughs> Well, that goes with the idea of having a persona. It's not enough to just be yourself because that can be boring. You have to have a persona that people will either love or that they'll love to hate. But either <laughs> way, they're watching and they're engaging, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and you're getting, like, for me, I've had a surprising number of messages where people said, you know, I came to your channel from, you know, this bashing yeah. video and I hated you, but now- This is my daughter. Hi. Oh, I can see that. Oh, hi. How are you doing? She's asking, how are you doing? I'm good. Good. <laughs> are you a flat earther? Are you a flat earther? Sort of. Sort of? Yeah. She's, I let her, yeah, I, obviously I, I don't make her believe anything. She, she chooses things for herself. Still investigating? Still investigating? Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Pretty fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, you're you're saying? Um. What was I saying? Uh, trolls. We're talking about trolls and about how uh, having your own persona that people can love to hate. Yeah. You know, and and it's not just because here's the thing. It's not just about growing your channel and making money off your channel. It's that the bigger your channel is the more engagement you get, the more other people will stumble upon your channel. So then you influence people who might've been on the fence, right? And and some people who started out as my trolls, they're starting to come around and they're like, okay, I thought this was stupid at first and I subbed to you just to laugh at you, but now I kind of, I'm starting to believe what you're saying, you know, and, yeah, and yeah. it's nice to see that. That's um, really cool. So I think, I think, Again, I think having that persona, either be really charismatic or be really weird and surprising. Um, uh, just, just do something memorable that people can remember you for. Make, that makes your channel stand out, right? Uh -huh. um, even Eric DeBay, his channel stands out because he's so eloquent. So even uh -huh. though his, his voice is monotonous, he's still so eloquent um, and intelligent. And I think that rings through. The quality and, of what he's saying is, yeah he's a he's a he's a bright man and so uh -huh. I, I think that sets him apart in and of itself right yeah 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 i think one of these days i want to uh to put my hood up and get like a dark hood and then kind of do like a darth Sidious kind of a thing and just read the troll comments and say oh or you are stupid <laughs> and, oh well done <laughs> I don't, i'll do it really good for october and maybe yes. something like that i think it'd be fun just to do that the dark side is strong with this one. <laughs> yeah, I did a mean, mean tweets. I call it mean tweets video because that kind of trends a little bit more than mean comments video. Uh -huh. um, but where I read the mean comments that people laughed and, and it did it did well enough. Um, another thing I think uh, for people who are wanting to start a flat earth channel. So have a persona, embrace the trolls, um, do collaborations especially now it's important because YouTube will not show your videos to many new people because of the shadow mm -hmm. banning. So how are you supposed to get new subscribers if YouTube isn't showing your content to new people, right? Yeah, I think teamwork <laughs> is more essential than ever right now. It's just this team building thing, just talking to other flat earthers and uh, helping raise aware of each other. 
Yes, yeah. And I think doing collaborations with channels that are roughly the same size as yours to start out, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the bigger channels, they, they get a lot of requests for collabs. So like I've had a lot of requests for interviews that I just haven't had a chance to kind of follow up on. Um, yeah, one of the reasons that I agreed to yours is because I, you did a the top female top YouTube. Female. Yeah, yeah, flat earth YouTubers. And I felt like you presented my channel in a respectful way and I appreciated that. And so I thought, yeah, okay, I'll do this interview. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. And so, so, but I think, so that's one way, right? Uh, of getting people interested. But I also think for the big channels that are getting a lot of requests, um, either they have to see that your channel has potential to be a, a, a really good channel, or they have to love your content so much that they want to share it with their audience, um, that they want to help you find a bigger audience. But if you're still kind of finding your way in, in, in your channel branding and your persona and, and what your channel is going to really be, uh, then I think collaborations with people who are kind of at that same place can be helpful because then your audience and their audience, they kind of like that. They like that you're kind of new. They like that you're still kind of adapting and that's what they want, right? Whereas yeah. the people who want maybe something that's very slick and they want something very polished, they might not be ready for your content yet, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, so I really appreciate that. Yeah, so doing collaborations with people who, for whom that collaboration makes sense, that the, that the audiences will actually want to subscribe to you and your audience will want to subscribe to the person you're collaborating with. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's some really great advice. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> well, because oh, well, because I was going to say, well, because I have my channel, I'm surprised that I have over 7,000 subscribers, especially because I, I make so few videos, <laughs> especially in the yeah. last year, too. Um, What's been going on with that? So my health has been terrible. Uh -huh. um, also, I was disillusioned, I think, with a, I was annoyed with the, I was annoyed with the, with the community. Uh -huh. um, you know, what I spoke about earlier about that lack of discernment that uh -huh. really, it really hit me hard. And I just thought like, why am I spending, I'm pouring all this energy and time into flat earth. And are these really the people are these, are, is this really, are these my people? Is this my tribe? Is this my community? Yeah. Um, and I, I kind of had a hard time with that. Um, but I've had time to kind of think about it and reassess, um, especially with what's going with the health situation. Uh, and, and yeah, it's my community in the sense that we're not just going along with what the mainstream tells us to believe, right? And mm -hmm. so, and also we do share that belief about the shape of the earth. So I do want to start making more content again. And my uh -huh. health, I think I've just realized my health won't get better. I can't just keep waiting until I magically get better. It's not going to get yeah. better. It's not going to get easier. So I can't just keep waiting. I just have uh -huh. to start finding a way to fight through it. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of great content to, you know, ideas. I, I don't know about you, but for me, I've got like this humongous log jam. I can think of like my next 20 videos already. And it's just a matter of like getting the time to actually put the video down. And it's hard for me. I, I, I get down and I'm like writing scripts and everything that for different ideas for, for future content. And just like, oh, I wish I had all the time in the world just to do this every day. And I would. So Yeah. And I wish I had a partner. Like I think uh -huh. for me, that would help a lot. It's just someone to help out. Um, because it's uh -huh. so much work to, to do, to have a successful channel is a lot of work. Yeah, well, um, I believe it. What are you wanting to do with yours? Do you think, are you wanting to do more interview stuff? Are you wanting to do top 10 list stuff or what are you thinking? Well, I do everything. <laughs> I, yeah. I do the top 10 list. I like doing flat earth news. I like doing flat earth history is a new branch. I really want to start going on with. I'm, I'm right now I'm working on a, a video about Columbus and uh, yeah, you'll, I'll share the video really soon. It's like at the very end of almost finished. And I, I found a very fascinating article by Yale University. Okay. And it shows a flat earth map. And they say that Columbus was highly inspired by this flat earth map. I was like, 
what? And so I've gone through and I've, uh, I, I really started the video out planning on uh, just picking apart a lot of the flatter straw men that get brought up and misrepresentations of it. And I actually read, read uh, Washington Irving's book, which was all about, uh, it was the major book that got people that put into the media the whole idea that Columbus was out there trying to prove that the earth was a globe. Does that make sense? And so that everyone says that that was totally wrong now. And that, and so I was like, okay, well, why were they teaching us all these wrong things for so long? And so I had this whole thing about, uh, well, it's th this whole thing that you're talking about with fact checking is it says it, my textbook says it, therefore it's right. And so it's like, okay, so why did the textbook say it? And so I went and traced it all back to Washington Irving's book. And now I'm reading that and I found quite a bit of surprises. One of the major surprises I found was uh, that people in, in, according to the book, no one was worried about falling off the edge of a flat earth. Everyone was worried about falling off the edge of a globe earth, which is a totally different perspective. It's like, no way. So it's been really, really fun to, to look into this. And so uh, yeah, there's so much content that I could make when it comes to, to flat earth history. I want to get into biology. I, I want to continue on with just reading different textbooks and doing commentary on the textbooks with my modern earth science destroyed. And yeah, as you can see, um, I'm just really ambitious, but I've, I'm going in 10 different directions at once. And that makes it difficult to to give any one particular area all of the attention it deserves. And that's where I'm really itching for a team member, just as you're describing, to, to help with the content producing and, and things like that. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes having a narrow narrower focus can help, I think. Because then yeah. when people subscribe to your channel, they know what they're going to get. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. And that's, and I think I've been struggling with that as well because I don't want, I don't, I don't want to just do orphan red anymore. I want to do yeah. more Sasha videos, but uh -huh. my subscribers subscribed because they wanted orphan red. They didn't subscribe uh -huh. because they want to hear Sasha talk. They want uh -huh. orphan red. And so, if I'm going to change the persona, then, then my audience won't appreciate that, right? So then I have to figure out how do I transition? Do I transition? Do I just start a different channel? Yeah, right? I, I totally hear you on that. I I, I, uh, I do uh, multiple things on my, I don't just talk about Flat Earth on my channel though. That's the primary thing that brings people in to my channel is when I talk about Flat Earth. Uh, but sometimes I do like to talk about uh, gospel topics. And so I have gospel insights. And so I kind of throw those into my channel every once in a while. Uh, and there are, there are people who do enjoy that stuff, but my main, my main kicker is doing, uh, doing flat earth content. And so I, I, I hear you when it comes to intermixing different content in your channel. And yeah, so that is kind of a struggle, but I recommend just watching your analytics and just mm -hmm. uh, and seeing what the, your audience says. I think people love you enough that they will, you know, they just want to hear from you. Something is better than nothing. You know, if if it's taking six months before you come out with another Orphan Red, people will <laughs> forgive you if you just want to talk about Sasha for a little bit. I guess we'll see, right? I guess we'll uh -huh. see. Um, people, yeah. If people are willing to wait six months for another Orphan Red video, they can wait a little bit for, or they can, they can deal with Sasha in between those times, you know? Yeah, I suppose so, right? Totally. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, like, I want it to be playful. I don't want it to be, it, it had become something where, look, I resented the fact that I felt bullied by the community, by flat earth, I won't say community. I felt bullied as much by flat earthers as by the trolls. Yeah, I, I hear you on that. There's, Flat earthers yeah. can be tough to their own, yeah. They, and, and I wasn't making enough money to justify it. I thought, you know, yeah. I could be using this time to do something that actually pays the rent. And uh -huh. instead, I'm just giving this away for free to people who don't appreciate it. So that was yeah. a bit of a question of like, you know, and it was interesting um, because I started a paid um, project and people who wouldn't, support my patreon because they're like i love your orphan red videos i want to see more and i said okay well here's my patreon if you want me to do more then feel free to support me and then if there's enough support there then i can justify using my time yeah. um 
uh, no, I'm broke right now. I just can't. Uh, okay. That makes sense. I get it. Um, but then I started a different paid project that had nothing to do with flat earth and suddenly they were able to support me there. And uh -huh. I thought that was kind of telling of, 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 what people were really willing to prioritize you know uh -huh. if you look at the top youtubers in any domain other than and even makeup now even makeup on youtube if you look at the top 10 channels in nearly all domains it's men mm -hmm. and even the top makeup channels jeffree star is a man that nikki what's her name Oh, is it Nikki Taylor? I don't know, but she's kind of a heavier girl and she does really dramatic uh -huh. makeup. She's a man. Well, she's a transgender. So like, even I in think the I saw a commercial, it was not the one that I, I kept seeing it on uh, Peacock. I, I, people like a bunch of guys like doing makeup. Was that one of her or something? Or no, because she presents as a woman, but it came uh -huh. out last year, the year before that she's actually transgendered. Um, and uh -huh. James Charles, he's one of the top beauty blog youtubers he's a guy so <laughs> women for whatever reason for various reasons um uh -huh. just struggle more to do as well on youtube um uh -huh. and yeah, so I, that's why I've, I've noticed that difference and that's where i'm like wow i really want to do what i can to help permit promote the female flatter channels out there because i can see the struggle that, uh, with the the divide there's a, a great divide uh, I, I don't think it's that we don't get enough promotion. I think it's that people prefer to hear men tell them information. I guess, yeah, there's kind of an authoritative pe thing that people just kind of accept that's the, the media, right? The, the well, they've done trend. studies, right? The people prefer yeah. to hear a male voice tell them information rather than a female voice. And they're more likely to believe it if it's a male voice. And even with male voices, people are more likely to believe it if it's a deeper voice. Uh-huh, um, to try and, and remember so, that. Yes, yeah, you should just drop your your voice if you a few decibels, <laughs> no, <laughs> you pitch, pitches. Um, but yeah, and so I think, so when people are looking for information, and I think we've seen this in the flat earth because there used to be a lot more women doing mm -hmm. flat earth channels and they would be very popular for a while and get a lot of attention and then nobody cared you know what i mean so they would, yeah. they would get a boost they would get promoted everyone oh i love this new flat earth woman and then people would just stop watching so yeah. even right so even if they had subscribers they weren't getting the view count mm -hmm. um and so i think that that's part of it it's partly that that on some level people prefer to hear men talk uh -huh. to them maybe about flat earth. And then uh -huh. on another level, because even in comedic YouTube videos, even when you look at who are the top comedians on YouTube, uh -huh. there are a lot of women, but they don't, they don't make the top 10. I think there's one in the top 10, maybe Lily Singh. Um, uh -huh. And so it's not even just hearing information. There's just, People like to see sexy women. They like to see pretty women, um, but they can see that anywhere. They don't have to go to a YouTube video to see a sexy woman or a pretty woman, uh -huh. especially nowadays. So yeah. I think more people who are watching YouTube are men. And so uh -huh. I think you have to figure out what is it that men want to see women do on YouTube? Uh -huh. They, yeah. And talk about science is not one that you would particularly think of. Well, there's science girl or physics girl. I don't remember what her name is. And she Remember's does science. Really, I've heard of her. And yeah, she does really well. But again, she kind of trades on. If you look at the comments and you look at her audience, it's kind of nerdy guys who think that the, maybe they could have a chance with her because uh -huh. she's pretty, but she's not super sexual and uh -huh. she's not gorgeous. Right. And she's, you know, she has a nice body, but she she doesn't have an overtly sexual body. So she's kind of like the nerdy girl that nerdy guys might actually have a chance with, right? So uh -huh. it's still a sexualization. It's still desire. It's not, they're not tuning into her because she's giving them the best. Because of what she's saying. Yeah. yeah, it's more that they're kind of, that there's a little bit of attraction there in addition 
to the content yeah. that she's giving them. And, wow. and I think that that's interesting and that's okay, right? We're animals and, and we have these animal instincts and, and behaviors. Yeah. Um, I think that's where, for me anyways, I have to do this because I feel kind of like driven to do it. I feel like I just, I, I'm saying things because I feel like they need to be said. I don't really care, you know, what someone thinks of me for saying it. I'm, I'm willing to take that risk and put my, put you know, put my entire credibility out on a ledge just to say things because, you know, I just feel the need to say it. And so, but you don't want to be speaking to an empty room. You don't want yeah. to be, right? If you yeah. have something to say, it's because you feel that people should hear it, right? Yeah. And so I think trying to figure out what is it about How to reach you? the largest audience you can is yeah, that's like, important. There are a lot of angry, shouty men. Mm -hmm. um, and they love to watch angry, shouty men on YouTube. And uh -huh. so you see that a lot of angry, shouty men channels do very Make well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because there's this huge group of angry, shouty men who don't aren't allowed to shout at people in their life, right? It's not yeah. acceptable. So they go to YouTube and they watch other men shout at each other and they love it. They live vicariously <laughs> through it, right? Yeah. And so if you can pinpoint who are you wanting to talk to, if you're wanting to talk to those people, then just be angry and shouty and your channel will do well. Um, and, I, and that's the thing. So for a woman, I think it's a lot harder to figure out who to talk to because wow. you get misled and it's not intentional. Like I remember there was the very sweet, very sweet girls and women in, in Flat Earth. We had this redhead panel and there were these very sweet women and they had interesting ideas and opinions about Flat Earth and they're gone now. They don't do Flat Earth anymore because people told them, I love your videos, I love your channel, but they didn't watch their videos. They don't um, watch the channel. So it's like, you say that you like the channel and the videos, but not enough to watch them, right? And so- yeah. That's so always I, been my, one of my, my biggest pet peeves is I take all this effort to go and describe something. And then a bunch of people come and argue with me about stuff that I never said once in the entire video. I was like, come on. That's my biggest, biggest, biggest pet peeve. Is, yeah. And so like, I've got my whole debate board online here. And, uh, and so I'm always telling people, okay, what part of what I actually said? Oh, you froze up. Am I frozen there. or is it? Oh, there you're back. Sorry, my, my internet's been weird and cutting out. I'm, I'm really thankful we've been able to talk as long as we have. But yeah, yeah. Uh, so go ahead. Well, yeah, I think if people are miss, I think make videos rather, I would say rather than arguing people in your comment section or even in real life, um, just make it make a new video and say, oh, I'm going to talk more about this thing that you missed in my last video or that was misunderstood. <laughs> And yeah. then you have new content, right? Because I think yeah. some I've been doing that thing with Mr. Sensible there is we we I'll make one video and then he does a response and then I'll do a response video to his re response video. And it's kind of been fun to do that back and forth sometimes. Yeah, that works really well to have like an opponent or an adversary. And then you just because then you, both audiences kind of will check out each other's channels just to yeah, see. Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 So um yeah, um, you said you were looking for a team, a team member to help you out with your channel. Like, what are you talking about there? I would just like someone. Like, I just want someone to come set up the lights, set up the camera. Uh, no one in person um, then. <laughs> yeah, I, I need a personal assistant, yeah. uh, and and also someone to bounce ideas off of, because yeah. for me, I'll have. It's hard for me to be concise. The way I think, the way I talk, it's really hard for me to boil it down to something that's just easily said in, in seven words, you know? Yeah. I just can't, I don't know, it's just not something I'm able to do very well. Uh -huh. And so I would like someone that I can bounce ideas off of um, and talk to about an idea that I want to make a video about so that we can kind of just through discussion, boil it down and 
you know, debating it maybe so that we can kind of get to the crux of it. And like, what is the actual underlying point that I'm really wanting to get across, right? Underneath uh-huh. all that noise, um, but still be fun. Cause that's one thing I, you know, there are a lot of serious channels and, and that's awesome. But for me, I like to do things that are more amusing to me. Like I love the little costumes that I wore. I like yeah. that. It was fun. It made it fun for me. And, uh-huh. and I think that set my, my channel apart as well that I didn't realize when I started, but I did later on that having yeah. that persona helped. That is one of the differences between me and the other redheads that disappeared off the face of the <laughs> YouTube flat earth yeah. um, was that they didn't have a persona. They were just these sweet girls talking about flat earth and that got boring fast. And so, uh, and whereas I was wearing princess dresses, I was being wacky. People didn't really know what was going to happen next. Yeah. People would come back to my channel to be like, what is she doing this week? <laughs> yeah. I get that. I get that. Yeah. yeah. And so if I'm going to start doing videos again, then I want it to be that way. I want it to be unexpected. I want it to be a little crazy. I want it uh-huh. to be a little outside your comfort zone, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I really like what you talk what you talk about. Uh, I, I watched your video about time, and I thought that was a great video. And uh, yeah, I like you know you're, you're you're really bright and very intelligent, and I I really like seeing this side of you. So if you ever want to you know bounce ideas off someone, yeah, I'm I'm here anytime. You Thank just come you. talk to me, and I I'd love to hear more from you, and you know do future Thank collaborations. You. Um, one thing I often get people often will tell me like. Oh, just be Sasha. Oh, just make, you know, you don't have to be all, you know, don't wear the princess dress and and just, you know, show your intelligence and and be straightforward about it. And when I make those videos, then they don't watch it. So it's like, you told me to to go try this and then you didn't watch it. So you're giving me bad advice here. If If you're telling me to do something that you're not even wanting to watch, what is the what's the deal yeah and i think that that's that's what happens to a lot of female youtubers is that that people tell them you should do this and they give them advice that works for male youtubers that yeah. doesn't work for female youtubers because women are not men and it just things don't work the same way and and it's just bad advice. It just doesn't apply. And so all these uh, these uh, guys that give uh, me their the justice of the world, right? <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't feel like injustice. I, I like that I'm different. I like that women are uh, different. Uh, I like that, you know, if I spill something, men are more likely to try to help me pick it up. Whereas if a guy uh, spills something in a store, everyone is just busy looking away. So I don't I, mind. My, that we're my, heart, my heart is breaking on the inside because I really I just. I, I love seeing the side of you. I love having these intellectual conversations about everything and just, you know, I like this conversation. That's my favorite. I, you know, this is heaven for me. I'm just, you know, that that's what makes me really happy. And so when you tell me that you don't want to do that as much in, in the future because of popularity, you know, my heart breaks for that. You know, it's not popularity. And thank you, by the way, for saying such kind things. And it's, it's this, it's that I think these conversations are fun for people to have but I don't think it's as fun for people to watch. Uh-huh. If it's two guys talking, for some reason, the voice range for whatever reason. And I think guys, when they're, when they're talking, even if they're talking at an intellectual level, there's still some banter that's a bit different. Um, uh-huh. They're more fun to watch. Whereas this conversation, you and I are having a lot of fun, but I don't yeah. know if the viewers enjoy it as much, right? Because I've, I've definitely seen that as well. I've, I've seen yeah. that. Uh, I've, I've definitely seen that where my interviews with different people, they're not as popular as one of my lessons in Flat Earth. You know, those take off with wildfire. <laughs> if I were to do my next lesson on uh, modern earth science destroyed, that's going to be my number one video, like really quick. And so I, I know which ones are the ones that are the most popular, but I, I've had that battle where I do things because I enjoy them and yeah. not just for the popularity sake. And if yeah. someone else can enjoy watching the video with me, great. And so, you know, it's my whole idea with YouTube is my dream has just been, I want to get paid to, for Facebooking. That just sounds amazing to me. I want to be able to say what I want to say and, just get paid for Facebooking, basically. Just talking to people. This is just incredibly fun for me. And so yeah. that's that's the dream. Yes. But if that is the dream, then you do have to you do have to recognize 
there's a line between what you find fun and between what your audience enjoys. Yeah. And that's and, why I think this, this kind of stuff is good every once in a while, but it can't be the main thing. It's, no. uh, you know, you've got your meat and potatoes, as it said, you have to have, it's okay to have a couple other things in there for variety, but you've got to keep the main thing, the main thing. Yes. Yeah. And, and I mean, you do have to be authentic. You do have to have some authenticity. You know, I think Pat was, people loved her interviews um, and they loved watching her do interviews. But then when they found out a bit of truth about her and they saw the inauthenticity of it, then they were really, they felt really betrayed. And then she lost her audience because they realized like she's just fake. Like this is all fake. It's all a game. Right. And yeah. so that's where I think you, you have to, it's just, it's tricky, right? You have to be able to be authentic, but still give people what they want, but not so much that you're faking who you are. Right? Like it's, it's a, it's a careful game, but like I was watching, I tried watching Jaronism's new content and I used to like his channel. Um, I think he has great info and I like his attitude. He's respectful to people that disagree with him, um, you know, but now he has all these other team members. And it's funny because now it's, I can't, I, it's just not to my liking anymore. Right. Uh -huh. Like it's the, the, the humor level is, it's just not, that's just not my sense of humor. But wow. I can see that that that's very appealing to certain like types of guys, right? They want to hear yeah. the guys kind of having that locker room kind of, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and so that's the thing, right? Like, I think you have to figure out who, which audience do you want? Who are you catering to? You're going to alienate some people and you're going to draw in other people. So you can't please everyone, right? Yeah. Um, so... So I think it's not enough to just want to do what you find enjoyable because you want, otherwise, why, why, why not just say it to your empty room? If you're putting it out there, I think it's because you want. Well, for me, I, I hope to find the, the people out there who will enjoy it. And so I put it out there just to find those people. There, there might be few, but those are the people I get really excited about because, yeah. you know, yeah. That, that right there makes it worth it. When I can find those people that I can connect with. Yeah. Yeah. I can, that common ground that I like to celebrate so much. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good way of seeing it. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I'm going to start making videos again soon. Cause like I said, I realized I can't just keep waiting till I get better. That's not happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm just going to have to figure, figure it out and just do it. Um, but okay. I am going to have to figure out like who, what's the audience that I'm on a target, right? Uh -huh. I do see it as a re a reset of my channel. Yeah. And, and do I want to go back to the more early days, playful Orphan Red, or do I want more Sasha in there? I don't know. I think that the early days, more playful Orphan Red, people liked, loved hating her a lot more. So she got uh -huh. more engagement. She got more views, whereas the 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 more middle of the line Sasha Orphan Red just didn't, yeah, it wasn't as powerful. So I think yeah. I might go well, back. Yeah, please. Uh, although I I guess I don't know how that would really affect your channel or not because I think some people they see the persona and they think that's your real persona. Does that make sense? And so I think part <laughs> of uh, part of it is oh. You know, when they find out that's not all of a sudden, you know, they it kind of gets people confused a little bit. You know what I mean? And so <laughs> I, I think that could be part of the thing of endangering your other channel with Orphan Red is letting them see your true persona. Why is she acting this way over here, but acting something acting totally different, normal over here? And so yeah. yeah, I think yeah. if if you love to hate, you know, a certain persona, when all of a sudden you find out you know, that's acting, it's, it's, it can kind of, I don't know, maybe they might just hate you even more. So you never, you never know. Oh yeah. I think it would work in my favor. <laughs> okay. Shall I let you go uh, have fun with your children, your daughter? Okay. Yeah. I've got uh, uh, three daughters and one son. So. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's a household yeah. full. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. So. Yeah, they're kind of itching for me right now, so I, I better be going. But thank you so much for, for having this conversation with you. I really feel 
like so much closer and I, I really feel like I just made a great friend. So definitely. I, yeah. Me too. Uh, it's been yeah. fun. I, yeah. Um, I really want to see more of your particularly of your Sasha channel here that you're talking about wanting to do. Uh, I'd love to promote that like crazy and and nice. hear more about the intellectual things you have to say, like what you think about. That's very fascinating to me. Thank you. I appreciate that. I like that. Um, yeah. And so, and just thank you for the opportunity. It was nice to, to come on and talk. And, you know, I wanted to say thank you for treating my channel with the, with the respect that you treated it with in your top 10. Cause I think it would have been really easy, uh, to play it a different way. Um, yeah. but I, I liked, I liked the way you presented it. So I appreciated that. Thank you. Okay. Well, yeah, thank you. I think you're a, val a very valuable person to have in the community. And I know you don't really see it as a community, but yeah, I, I get it. So yeah I, yeah, I think you're, you're, I'm, I'm glad to have you on the top 10 is what I'm trying to say. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. I'm gonna let you go. Um, yeah. So, and I will happily, uh, put a little promo on my channel to, to let people know. Uh, and so, yes, links down below. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Okay. Cheers. Good night. Right. Good night.